Hello friends, both old and new, I'm John St. Baptiste, and this is the music makes people come together. We share amazing and eclectic music with amazing and eclectic people. Once a month I do a history of music video, and this month is one that's very special to me. Uh, and this is the music of the Grateful Dead. Now, you'll notice that the video is titled 2314. That's how many shows they did in a less than 30 year period. And uh, they were always known for their live music, their live performances of their songs. Their studio work is great. Don't get me wrong by any means, but they were known for their live performances, and that's what we're going to be featuring today. Uh, first, I just want to take a moment to RIP and have a moment of silence for Ron Pigpen McKiernan, Keith Goodshow. Brett Midland, Vince Wilnick, and of course Jerry Garcia. Uh, Jerry Garcia, if you're not a Dead fan, is probably the only name that you're familiar with because he was the lead guitarist for the Grateful Dead and absolutely huge and impactful on the 20th century. But uh, yes, the other gentleman who I mentioned. We're all keyboardists for the Grateful Dead. And uh, actually that job has the highest mortality rate in youth for any uh, any job ever. Four out of six. That's a pretty high percentage. So moment of silence. Okay, I can only do a moment of silence so long on a video before people get bored. Uh, speaking of the video, if you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe it. Uh, if you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I put things up. I usually put things up twice a week I put up a music playlist and I have my show called Talkin' Tolkien where I always put that up as well now a bit of the dead history they got together back in 67 and through a number of tragedies and things like that they still stuck together um, you know, it's interesting when Bobby Weir started with the band, he was 16 years old. How he got away with his, with his parents is beyond me, but he did. Can't call him baby Bobby Weir anymore, though. He's like this, like, Zen master now or something like that. Uh, by its very nature, there are going to be fewer tracks than I normally put up on a playlist, uh, because the dead are known for jamming out. That's, that's what they do. That's what they did and what they still do, because Dead and Company is, I believe certainly recommendable uh, it was actually really cool in the same week at the same venue I got to see the Grateful Dead and Slayer which was pretty freaking awesome but uh, so by its very nature there are going to be fewer tracks but they are slightly longer because you know, the, 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 these are gentlemen who like to really jam when they would do a track. 
Uh, also, keep in mind the video quality on some of these tracks is very poor. Uh, the audio quality, I have looked for the best that I could find, so I had to sacrifice a bit of video quality just because these are older recordings and they didn't have HD cameras and things like that. It, it's all uh, completely real to real traditional cameras. So the video quality is not going to be quite as amazing. Also, if you're ever in this part of the country uh, where I live here in the Midwest in Ohio, go up to Cleveland, go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They have a feature of Jerry Garcia's guitars that were custom made just for him by an artist who, uh, who whose name escapes me right now, but it absolutely gorgeous guitars to look at. I don't even care if you're not a guitarist. These are beautiful. So as always, this video is going to have an Easter egg at the beginning, the middle, and the end. There's also going to be a second Easter egg at the end, but that's for your pleasure if you want it. Um, but please, as I said, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's go ahead and get right into this work. Uh, now we're ta starting off with Uncle John's Band. Oh, and by the way, I put live recordings up for every one of these tracks. Because that's what the dead are known for. 2,314 concerts. Think about that number. Think about doing that in 25 years. It's absolutely bloody insane. But this is Uncle John's Band done at Alpine Valley on July 17th in 1989. Uh, in this mix, I am putting some of the more popular tracks. I'm also putting some of the really deep cuts because both are great and the dead could jam on either. And they could also jam on other people's work and do some amazing stuff with it. By the way, I hope you noticed the little sign hanging there in the background. Because my house does only have deadhead parking only. I can't put it on my parking space in the lot at my complex unfortunately or I would totally do so but uh oh this is a good recording uh one of the things I love about this most is the acapella moments which you know the Grateful Dead always fed on so many different aspects of America Kana they fed on Dixie, they fit on gospel, they fit on blues, they fit on jazz, they fit on things that were contemporary with them at the time, like acid rock and so forth. And they made their own sound, and that's why they're great. That's why this is a history of music video, because The Grateful Dead has influenced so many artists, whether those artists realize it or not, and certainly whether their fans realize it or not. But, amazing work. After that, we have Althea. Uh, this was done on the 28th of March in Germany. I love this song so much. Uh, it was recorded back in 1981. Great stuff. Grateful Dead is another one of those bands that, like, people pass... And they still keep going on. They keep on trucking. Just like Alzi. By the way, if you don't get that reference, look it up. 
Also, if you want to know why the mortality rate of Grateful Dead keyboardists is so high, go ahead and look that up. Um, I'm not going to go super into that because I don't want to get too morbid. Uh, next, we have Friend of the Devil, which is one of the few songs that was written by Phil Lesh, but it, it's a great freaking track that I've always loved. And this is done on December 30th, 1983 at the San Francisco Auditorium. Uh, yeah, the dead are from San Francisco, so uh, it, it, that was a huge show. Absolutely huge show. Then we have my personal favorite Grateful Dead song. Which is Brown Eyed Women. Uh, this was done 1980 at Rady City Music Hall on Halloween night. And I absolutely love this track. It, it uh, I mean, I, I love so much work by the Grateful Dead, but this particular track really does it for me. I mean, it just. It it, 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 it's, I would have to say probably one of my 50 favorite tracks of all time. Uh, not just one of my 50 dead, favorite dead tracks, like one of my 50 favorite period tracks of all time. After that, before he passed away, we have... Pigpen singing Brown Eyed Women. Or no, I'm sorry, singing Hard to Handle. Uh, this was back on June 21st in 1971 at the Chateau de Oville in France. And, you know, Pigpen really, like, Almost any keyboardist, and I can tell you this as a keyboardist, is a fan of Pigpen. Even if they don't even like the Dead's music, he was so amazing that they're like, oh yeah, this guy can rip it. He He's unbelievable. Um, and this was one of the last shows that he did uh, before he passed away. Very unfortunately, at a very young age, 27, um, died of liver damage, which at 27 is really kind of impressive. Like, it takes some work to do that. But he also lived on Southern Comfort and Thunderbird, so, you know. I enjoy my drinks. I don't necessarily enjoy my drinks that much. Uh, following that, we have from the Oakland 87 show, Sugar Magnolia. Uh, I love this song because it's, it, it, it's always done as a male duet with Bob Weir and... It uh, used to be Jerry Garcia. Now that we have Dead and Company, it's with uh, John Mayer and Bob Weir. But it, it's it's such a powerful song. Then we have Ripple, done on Halloween night, also in 1980 at Radio City Music Hall. And this was the last time that it was played live. No, 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 I take that back. They played it live once after that. Um, but it, it's it's a big song to any old school dead fans. And I hope you really enjoy listening to it. Then to end this mix out, we have Touch of Grey. 
Uh, this was done on November 3rd, 1991 at Golden Gate Park Live. And this is a song that is especially... Uh, predominant in my life right now because uh, I'm uh, I'm not by any means an older person but uh, I'm you know, I've, I've gone beyond hitting my stride and I'm aging you know, there's a four in front of my birthday so I uh, yeah it, 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 it this song means a lot to me and this is one of the last tracks that the dead did. It was at Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. It was a free concert that they did, which I think is really awesome. You know, the dead's always been about touring. They've always been about playing live. That's why I put together this whole mix. It's all live tracks. And the Easter eggs have a few interviews. Speaking of which, at the end, there are two Easter eggs. There's the live interview Easter egg, and then there's another Easter egg that I'm sure you can guess what it is, because it's over an hour long. And if you don't know what it is, my only clue I'm going to give you is the dead is known for the live shows. So enjoy that. Uh, shout out for this week. I, I try and alternate it between a larger content creator and a smaller content creator. I'm all about supporting smaller content creators. It's a huge thing for me. But there are some larger ones who I do like to talk about. And this is a uh, guy named Modern Renaissance Man. And he does work across the board about things that he wants to study and discover and he's he's just a really cool guy so uh if you get the opportunity and you get the time check out his work after you check out this video and this playlist but yeah i'm gonna let you go ahead and enjoy the work uh like i said there's an easter egg at the beginning middle and the end and also at the end, after the end Easter egg, there's a very big one. And it, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. In fact, you know what? I'm not even going to like leave it to happenstance after the last Easter egg. It's the dead live in 1971 and it's an entire concert. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy the live experience that one can have with this band. Um, as a young lady named Mountain Girl once said, their sound is so big. But, uh, yeah, so enjoy the music. Enjoy the tunes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell and please, please, please leave your comments in the section down below. Let me know about the next thing you would like to hear from me. Whether it be just a general playlist or a history of music playlist. I hope to see you all Friday for Talking Tolkien. Uh, I should be having a very special guest. And... In the meantime, if you would please be so kind, P-O-U-R, be excellent to one another, and party on.